Hi friends, good evening. Today is 13th August 2018 and this is Daily Current Affairs brought to you by Neo IAS. And our topics are Igor, Indian Ocean Dipole, Limbu and Tamang communities, India's development projects in the neighboring countries. In map aided program, we have Burkina Faso and PQRS that is Prelims Christian Erosion Series. And the first topic is Igor's. Recently, United Nations Human Rights Panel observed that China is interning Uyghur region. Interning means China is suppressing the Uyghur people. So, who are I Uyghurs? Uyghurs are a Turkic ethnic group which mainly lives in the East and Central Asia. And they are primarily in the Xinjiang province or Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. This is Xinjiang province or Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region and you can see it is neighboring to Mongolia, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Pakistan, India. And in the case of India, it is near to the lay district of Jammu and Kashmir. So Uyghurs are neighbored by these old countries and they are an autonomous province in the China. So, they are demanding for a separate nation because most Uyghurs are Muslims and Islam is the important part of their cultural identity and their language is related to Turkish. In China, most of the people speak Mandarin where in Uyghur province, they speak Turkish or a language related to Turkish and they regarded themselves as the culturally and ethnically similar to Central Asian nations. Even their look is also you can see this boy, this is an Uyghur boy and who is having more features of Central Asia rather than Chinese. So they are as in the case of religion or ethnicity and culture, they are, they are more similar to Central Asian nations rather than China. Thus they are demanding for a separate nationhood. There is another issue is that and the Xinjiang region is very backward in development. Chinese government they are claiming that Chinese government has made no effort in order to improve the Xinjiang province. But in recent initiative like OBOR that is one belt one road which passes through the Xinjiang province even though they claim themselves as backward. OBOR is the initiative of China we know it already but even it is not acceptable to India it passes through the Xinjiang region and also our POK, Park occupied Kashmir. Anyway, back to the Uyghur persons. And Uyghurs are primarily practice Islam, and the majority of modern Uyghurs are Sunnis. Significant diasporas of Uyghurs are also present in the Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkey. So, this is all about Uyghurs. And our next topic is Indian Ocean Dipole. We are predicting a positive Indian Ocean Dipole to which will boost the Indian monsoon. So, what is Indian Ocean Dipole? It is an atmosphere ocean coupled phenomenon in the tropical Indian Ocean. And simply it is a difference between the temperature of sea in the western part of Indian Ocean and also the eastern part of Indian Ocean. And it has two phases. One is positive phase and the second is negative phase. In the positive phase, or in the positive Indian Ocean Dipole, the Eastern Equatorial Indian Ocean, which is near the Indonesia, becomes colder than normal. And the Western Indian Ocean, near the African coast, becomes unusually warm. You can see it in the first figure. You can see Indonesia there, or which is the Eastern Indian Ocean. And near the African coast, you can see it is the Western Indian Ocean. In positive phase of Indian Ocean Dipole, the eastern region becomes colder and the western region becomes warmer. This is the positive phase. In the negative phase, the reverse happens. That is the eastern equatorial Indian Ocean becomes abnormally warm and the western tropical part of the Indian Ocean near the African coast which becomes relatively colder. It can be explained in the second figure. You can see it here. The eastern region is warmer and the western region is colder. Both are a 
both are reverse to each other which means in positive phase if in one if in positive phase one area is warmer then in negative phase that area will be colder this is positive phase and negative phase and we are predicting and positive indian ocean dipole thus it will increase the monsoon drain in india and we are expecting that even there is no established correlation between the indian ocean dipole and indian summer monsoon rainfall but studies show that an above normal monsoon in the positive phase of indian ocean dipole we get an above normal rainfall in the positive phase of indian ocean dipole between 1994 to 1997 so thus if we get positive indian ocean dipole we are expecting a positive rainfall pattern and some drought years were there when it gone to the negative indian ocean dipole okay that is the uh, concept behind indian ocean dipole if we are getting a positive indian ocean dipole we are expecting more rain in the months uh, more monsoon and in, in negative indian ocean dipole it may happen to be a drought and this is not established correlation between indian ocean dipole and summer monsoon but this is the usual pattern and our no, next topic is limbu and tamang communities limbu and tamang communities are tribes in the states of sikkim recently the home ministry proposed to increase the number of seats in the sikkim legislative assembly from 32 to 40 we know that there are 32 members in the sikkim legislative assembly it will be increased to 40 in order to accommodate these limpu and tamang communities a petition was moved in the supreme court that limbu and tamang are not adequately represented in the uh, assembly of sikkim thus in on 2006 the supreme court directed home ministry to take necessary action now the home ministry decided to increase the number of seats in the sikkim legislative assembly first we need to know about the limbu community and these are two women in the limbu community and limbu or yaktum are the indigenous and native to himalayas and plains in the region of limbu valley which limbu valley is a region which is in mainly in nepal and also some part of sikkim so they are the uh, hill people of the limbu valley region or hill people of the sikkim and in limbu language limbu means heroes of the hill it means heroes of the hill and the history of limbu community is mentioned in the book which is called bong sol bong soli you can see it here bong soli also the book is also known as the vanisa valley bong soli and also known as vanisa valley and the traditional dress of the limbu community are makli and taga and in olden days they were practiced they were skilled in the silk farming now limbus are traditionally practicing subsistence farming and the main crops are rice and maize also alcohol is the main part of their lifestyle and uh, according to their religion alcohol is very important also they made traditional dishes from the home home grown domesticated animals such as beef lamb mutton poultry etc and limbus generally follow endogamy we know what is endogamy endogamy is marry within our own community so they follow endogamy and in 2003 this limbu community is notified as the scheduled tribe in sikkim and this is about limbu and you can see this is two limbu women and the next community is tamang tamang are the largest tibeto burman ethnic group which lives in nepal and they are traditionally buddhist by their religion and a population of tamangs are also in sikkim and the darjeeling area or darjeeling district of the west bengal and the main religion followed by the tamang is the nyingma tradition of vajrayana buddhism so they are buddhist by religion and they follow the nyingma tradition and the main festival of tamangs are sonam lochar sonam lochar sonam lochar is the main festival of tamangs and this festival is related with the tamang new year most tamangs are farmers engaged in agriculture this is a typical tamang women and the tribes of india 
is a major portion where UPSC asks question for prelims. Okay, and this is about Tama and Libu. And the next topic is India's development projects in neighboring countries. And India has been giving assistance to various SAR countries and also other countries. And the first project is Salma Dam, which is renamed as the Afghan India Friendship Dam. Salma Dam is a project or a dam which is located in the Harirut River in the Herat province of Afghanistan. This is the Harirut River, you can see it here, and Salma Dam is located in the Harirut River. And it is inaugurated by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani. And the, in order to commemorate the assistance given by India, the dam's name is changed to the Afghan India Friendship Dam. You can see it here. This is the Salma Dam and it is written there Afghan India Friendship Dam. Dam's name is changed to Afghan India Friendship Dam and it was completed by the Central Public Sector Unit that is VAPCOS under the aegis of Union Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. And this is all about Salma Dam. And the next project is Akaura Agartala Rail Last Link Project. It is a rail link between Agartala and Akaura. The Agartala is, we know it is a part of Tripura and Akaura is the part of Chittagong province in the Bangladesh. This is a part of it. You can see it here. In Bangladesh, it is connected from Akaura to Agartala. The last link is about 45 km, but this is also a part of it. 15 km rail link between Akaura and Agartala. And Akaura is in the Chittagong province of Bangladesh, and Agartala, we know it's in Tripura. And the project is funded by the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region and also the Ministry of External Affairs. And this ambitious project opens up Tribura and the entire northeastern region with Bangladesh. So the only accessible way to the from the mainland to the northeastern region is the Siliguri Corridor. By making more connectivity towards through Bangladesh to the northeastern region, we can easily travel from the mainland to the northeastern region. So this is one advantage and also we have the cultural exchange and also the people in both areas can communicate with each other. Maybe their family relatives will be in the northeastern region um, because we are separated and this is also an advantage. Anyway, Akhaura Agartala is a rail link project which connects Akhaura of the Chittagong and Agartala of India and this is the rail link and the next portion. Punat Sangchu 192 and Mangdechu. This Punat Sangchu 192 and Mangdechu are the hydroelectric projects mainly funded by the government of India in the respective rivers that is Punang Sachu and Mangdechu rivers of the Bhutan. So the first project was in Afghanistan, India, Salmada and the second project is in Bangladesh and the third project is in the Bhutan. And now we can move on to the map map aided program in map aided program we have burkina faso you can see it here burkina faso burkina faso is an african country and in the neighborhood of burkina faso we have niger mali mauritania senegal guinea cote d'ivory that is ivory coast ghana togo benin and this is burkina faso which is a landlocked country doesn't have an access to the any sea so, this is about Burkina Faso and in the last session prelims question erosion series, we have one question from the 2016 prelims and which of the following is or are, are included in the capital budget of the government of India and the first option is expenditure on acquisitions of assets like roads, buildings and machinery, second option loans received from foreign governments, third option loans and advances granted to the states and union territory. So the question is about capital budget and the options are A1 only, B2 and 3 only, C1 and 3 only, D123. So we can check what is the answer and actually what is the capital budget. 
capital budget is an account of the assets as well as liabilities of the central government which comprises both capital expenditure and capital receipt which comprises both capital expenditure and capital receipt. So, when it comes to the first option expenditure on acquisitions of assets like roads, buildings and machinery it is a part of capital expenditure which is a part of the capital budget and the second option loans received from foreign governments it is a loan received thus it is a capital received and the third option loans and advances granted to the states and union territories that is also a capital expenditure and hence a part of the capital budget. So, the answer is D all of the above 1, 2 and 3. Thank you so much for watching for more news and explanation you can refer to the daily current affairs material which is provided in the description section and fine thank you so much good night.